Hi, my name is Melinda Hitz, and I'd like to show you the Service and Finance Office and the duties that they perform for the City of Garden City. The first thing I'd like to take you through is the financial cycle of the City of Garden City. It starts out in late August with the Capital Improvement Plan. This process begins at the department level. We also get uh, input from the citizens and we have a committee that goes through the capital improvement programs to make recommendations to the City Commission. The City Commission holds a goal setting retreat before the budget process starts. It's usually at the end of February. We have re recently just completed that and we'll be looking at those goals during our budget session. In March and April, the city departments prepare budgets to present to the city manager that is then finalized as a proposed budget to present to the city commission. During the months of April, May, and June, those department budgets are presented to the commission. The city's assessed valuation is determined at the first part of July. The budget is finalized at a public hearing in the month of July for formal adoption. The finalized budget is then presented to the county clerk at the end of August and the budget sessions are over at that time. Once the budget is over, we start getting our financials ready for the audit. Uh, this happens during the months of November and December where we're closing our books out and the auditors come to the city during the month of February. The audit after approved by the city commission is sent to the Government Finance Officers Association to determine whether or not it meets the requirements for the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report Award by that organization. The City is required to have an annual audit every year. The result of this is a CAFR, a Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. The city has received the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting since 1994, the only city west of Hutchinson to receive this. This is the highest award that a municipality can receive in the financial reporting arena. This report also assists the bond rating agency when the city issues debt, as it has detailed community information needed for the analysis. The American Institute of Certified Public Accountants annually recognizes one CPA in government based on their innovative ideas in municipal finance. In 2014, I was named the Government Impact Award winner at the local level. Two others were recognized at the state and national level. This award, although received by me, is a collective work of all the staff that I work with. It is an honor to bring this back to Garden City. Two years ago, the city implemented financial management guidelines. This is a manual that is distributed to all city department heads so that they are in compliance with all of the guidelines and policies that the city has adopted. Some of those are fund balance and the reserves that we need to maintain. Another one is budgeting, that gives us the rules on budgeting, capital improvement program and fixed assets. We also have a debt management policy and a cash management and investment policy. We also look at the enterprise funds, which are the electric, water, sewer, solid waste funds and make sure that those funds have adequate cash balances to provide services to the customers. Another big one in there is our procurement policy. This is how we purchase things that the departments need in order to do their operations. The most important one that we just recently implemented was responding to a financial emergency. This was one of the goals that a commissioner brought up two years ago guideline that we put together has been well received throughout the nation. Uh, we've received several phone calls on how we put this together and several other entities in the United States are currently looking at providing one of these policies in their manual. I'd like to talk a little bit about debt issues that the city does. Uh, in order to provide funding for certain projects, the city has to issue debt. The state statutes govern how, how this is done. Municipalities cannot just walk into a bank and borrow money. In partnership with our bond council, financial advisor, and city staff, we issue general obligation bonds. 
These are backed by the full faith and credit of the city. Revenues from property tax and or user fees pay off the debt. The most recent projects paid for with property tax is the fire station addition and the fire station ladder truck, for example. Financing methods for other projects, the city has utilized the tax increment financing tool for the Shulman Crossing development. This tool is for commercial property. The city issued bonds to obtain the land and construct all of the infrastructure. The property taxes paid from the developer on these properties pays off the debt. Another item that we use for residential is the Rural Housing Incentive District and it is used for developers for qualified housing developments. This is very similar to a tax increment financing. The property tax paid each year repays the developers for qualified infrastructure costs. Now I'd like to talk about the mill levy discussion that we have. Take a look at a certain piece of property and show you how that works. Let's say that we have a house that has an appraised value of $150,000. We then take the appraised value by the residential percentage to calculate the assessed value on that piece of property. So this $150,000 house is multiplied by 11.5% to come up with $17,250. This dollar amount is then multiplied by the mill levy for the city, which in 2017, it was 37.457 mills. That amount is $646.13 of city property tax. If you would divide that by 12 months, that is $53.84 a month that you're paying for various services in the city. With that dollar amount, you get police service, fire services, maintenance of your streets, creation of parks and maintenance of parks, and also the zoo is in that calculation. Other items are the cemetery department and the administration of the city. The city in 2017 had purchases that it paid for of $85,546,000. Of that, the net payroll to city employees was $10,962,000. And if you can imagine, most of that money is spent in the city of Garden City. With that information, we also bring in roughly the same amount of money in revenues between property taxes and utility payments. The 85 million in and the 85 million out all goes through the service and finance department. The service and finance office, one of the big duties that they have there is the utility collection and billing. We create service orders when new customers come in, set up their accounts, and monthly they receive a bill. These bills are read every month. Today, with all the innovation that we've had, we have remote readings that we can electronically pull off of most meters. So this process has totally changed since 1991 when I started here. This is a very important area in uh, utility billing to make sure that your customer's billing is correct. We have various reports that we have to prepare to make sure that the bill that we send you is the correct amount. We have consumption reports from last year that we compare to this year to make sure you don't have any water leaks. If you do, normally you will see that on your bill and it will alert you to come and see us to see if there's anything that is amiss in your water service. There are many different ways that you can pay your bill to the city. You don't actually have to come in every day. For those of you that like to stay up at night, you can even pay us at 11.59 p.m. and that payment will be credited on that day through online payments. Customers can also pay through the automated phone system and pay with a credit card and or they can pay with a check and that's free of charge. 
Checks that are sent in the mail go to our lockbox. They are processed by the institution that we have for that. They are the ones that cash your checks and send us a spreadsheet to import into our billing to show that you have paid. And of course, we always have in-office payments where we gladly take your check, money order, or credit card payments. We also offer bank debits for customers and that is free of charge. The way that works is you will receive your utility bill in the mail and 15 days later that amount that shows up on your statement will be taken out of your account. We also offer budget billing for those customers that have been with us for a year or more and that is an average amount that you will pay every month based on your previous year usage.